Good morning. Good morning. To you who are our members, to you who are our guests, welcome. To you who are joining us by means of video, welcome. May you not only know the welcome of God's people today, but the welcome that God gives to us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Our call to worship this morning from Isaiah 40, verses 28 to 31. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint.
Today we begin a season of Advent, a season remembering that you kept your promise. You came to us in Bethlehem as the child of Mary long ago. Son of God, for this we thank you. We also look ahead in hope to that day that you've promised when Jesus returns. And we pray now in new and fresh ways that you would satisfy our hope and come to us through the Holy Spirit, to be with us today. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. We light this candle as a sign of our waiting and hope for the coming Christ. Grace and peace are yours, from God our Father, from our Lord Jesus Christ, through the gift of the Holy Spirit, in the promise of the coming of the Lord. To this let God's people say, Amen. God has welcomed us. In his spirit, let us welcome one another. Let's be seated.
This morning we lit a candle. Many churches do this. In fact, I would dare say now most churches have Advent candle wreaths in this season as we approach the day of Christmas, celebrating that our Lord has come and that our Lord will come again. And we lit a candle. It reminds us that this world without God, this world without God is a world of darkness and sin. And that only because of the promise of God, the light of the world has come to us in Jesus Christ. And maybe you're asking this morning, well, why did you light that one in the back? I can't see it very well. You should have lit the one in the front so that we could see that, that candle a little better. Well, maybe you can see it back there. You can see something of it. Today is the Sunday when we think about the hope that we have from God. Hope comes from a promise, not a wish, not out of our imagination, but hope comes from a promise. That's important. God has said something, and we expect it to come to pass. God has said something, and it has yet to come to pass. And that's why we hope. So here we sit in this world, which in too many ways is still far from God and in darkness. But in this darkness, God's word has spoken, God has kept his word, and God will keep his word, and the light will come. We see it in a distance in hope, but it will come, because God never breaks the promise. Remembering that, we hear these words from Romans 8. For in this hope, the, our adoption to sonship, for in this hope, we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Let's pray. Father in heaven, our world and our hearts groan for your return, for the return of the Lord Jesus. In too many ways, we live too far from you. We need you. And we live in darkness apart from you. Our hope is in your promise, God. We pray for the coming of your kingdom and the return of our king. So we pray that you would make us ready and worthy to welcome you through your grace. We ask for your forgiveness and cleansing through Jesus Christ, and that you would fill our hearts through the Holy Spirit with godly expectation. Amen. This morning we worship our God with our offerings, offerings for the church budget and for the benevolent fund.
I'm going to ask you in a moment if you have any prayer requests that you wish to share today. Um, a reminder, first of all, for announcements today. On December 5, that's a Monday, at 7 o'clock, on that first Monday of December, we will gather for our congregational meeting. Today, our families are receiving the, propo the proposed budget from the council, and uh, you'll find that distributed today by our deacons. That will be one of the things that we'll consider for adoption at the congregational meeting. We will also be selecting by lot an elder and a deacon. Willie Droxer is in the hospital. He has struggled with a lot of back pain, but that's not the only thing that is uh, a need for Willie right now. I understand he also has some kind of blood infection that they've found with him, and we're really hoping soon that he's able to be transferred from Sioux Center Hospital to a Vera Hospital in Sioux Falls. The McKinnon campus, I'm guessing, is where, yes, where uh, they hope to bring him once a bed becomes available. Uh, Willie is, has not done well. He's, he's struggled this past week. He is in pain, he is very weak, and he is in need of God's blessing and our prayers. It's hard to believe that uh, only a couple weeks ago he was sitting back in that center chair way in the back looking at me and uh, how quickly his uh, strength and health has, has uh, left him to this degree. So let's pray for Willie. Are there other things or people that we should remember in prayer today? Thank you. Lauren Badadalu family. Am I remembering right? Lauren passed away. Yes. Yes. And thank you for Greg Lane saying good evening to Jerry who can spend the holidays with his family. And he's still recovering. It'll be a long time. Um, but just thankful for what they do have. So Greg Lage is recovering. We've been uh, praying for him, remembering him from Ankeny. Uh, there's a number of guests with us today. Remind us of his story. Um, he's an Ankeny history teacher, and he was biking and fell. Um, he lacerated his brain under his helmet. Um, he's an avid bicyclist, and then um, he literally died, and the police found him Um, and then they brought him to the hospital, and then um, he's been in a coma, and they didn't know if he'd come out of that. Um, and now he's back. Um, most of his personality is there. Um, he didn't recognize his family um, fully. Um, so we're thankful for what is there, and then just the long recovery. He's in rehab, so he's in anything now with by his family, um, and I know the finances are tight, certain there's restrictions and they're pretty tight. Um, so if he doesn't show growth also, he'll have to go home immediately. Um, so we just pray for significant steps or growth so that he can maintain rehabilitation. Um, otherwise, he would have to go to the next step at home. Um, and the family is very strong Christians and they rely heavily on the Christian community to support them. Um, so they feel that very much. And just prayers, all people from all over the world um, know him because of his personality and just his outreach. Um, so just thankful again for the time they have. So Greg, avid bicyclist, history teacher in, in Ankeny, um, had a biking accident, fell, sustained a brain injury, uh, died essentially, was revived, uh, has, was in a coma for an extended period of time. Uh, he's come out of the coma. He's got some lingering effects, especially with memory. 
He's in rehab right now in, in agony. We want to see progress, and we're asking for that today in prayer, for continued progress in his rehabilitation, because as long as he's making progress, the, the rehab is going to be accessible to him. If he plateaus, then that's possibly going to become an issue for, for further uh, healing and care. So I'm summarizing because it's an important story, and this way our folks on video as well can, uh, can hear. So I'm so glad you shared that with us again. Gary. It was a wonderful Thanksgiving, families gathering. Uh, thank you for remembering our college students as well, uh, making their way back in our area to Sioux Center and Orange City and elsewhere, or some of us will be leaving for places like Watertown. And we will be praying for safety for that travel. And uh, as you finish a uh, semester's work, uh, strength to finish well. But, yeah, what a blessing for Thanksgiving. It was a good service here. Yes, Carol. Hey, just thankful for the nice weather that we've been having. Kind of goes along with the Thanksgiving thing as well. So that everybody's been able to travel safely or whatever. And Uncle Jerry and Joy had a great travel home. Remembering Jerry and Joy traveling home. And for the beautiful weather we could enjoy over the holiday weekend here. Yeah. Not so much this coming week, it sounds like, but that's an answer to prayer, too, because um, there'll be a measure of moisture with that storm. It will be white. It's not the color I prefer, but I'll take the moisture, as will you. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we are so grateful and blessed. Grateful that we may come to you as your children, that we have been adopted into your family for Jesus' sake. And we are blessed. For Father, you care for us, you hear our prayers. You watch over us, you are patient with us, you are forgiving. We thank you even for ways that you correct us, ways that when, in times when you hold us accountable for our sins. Thank you, Lord, for pulling us up short when we get into trouble. That you use even those times of sorrow and regret and pain to bring us back to you. We thank you today, O oh God, for being the God of, of promises kept. You made promises to bring us back to yourself when we had chosen to run away from you in our sin. You kept that promise, God. We remember that and see that again in your gospel. Thank you for telling us not only what your promises are and what your intentions are for us in your covenant. But through your word, help, thank you for helping us to see that you are a God who keeps your promises. We pray today, Lord, for the spread of your word through the ministry of your church, through the pulpits and places where your word is proclaimed, through our missionaries with through whom your word is shared through organizations like Gideon's and Wycliffe Bible Translators. Thank you, Lord, for making your word available here and throughout the world. Help us, Lord, to take that story that you have told us to heart. 
We pray for your leading for your church. Specifically, we pray again for your leading for us in Lebanon Church. Prepare us for the congregational meeting when we gather to consider matters that pertain to funding and to leadership for the future of this church. We thank you for your faithfulness to us and we ask that you would help us to be faithful to you in all things. We lift to you today, Lord, people who are dear to us, who are in need of your care and help. We lift Willie Drockstra to you. Lord, we pray that you would provide the care he needs and bless the care he is receiving. We thank you for, for being with him and for the care that you've provided for him in Sioux Center Hospital. We are so grateful and blessed to have such capable people and such a well-equipped facility. But Lord, we are concerned for him. And we pray for his healing and recovery. We pray for relief from pain for him. Lord, we long to be able to see him and have fellowship with him once again when he's in better strength. We pray, if it is your will and if it would bring glory to your name, that you would return that strength to his body. We pray for comfort for the Lauren Vanadalu family. This is a difficult time to face a season of sadness, perhaps, as families are gathering for holidays and Thanksgiving and Christmas. When one is taken from a family, that loss is felt in keen ways. We pray, Lord, that you would give your comfort to the Manadalu family. We thank you for the remarkable ways that you have answered prayers for Greg Lege, and we pray that now you would continue to help him to make steps of progress in his recovery so that rehabilitation care may continue for him, that he will have access to that. We pray, Lord, that his recovery <coughs> may be steady. We pray for the recovery of his memory and for recovery of the effects of the brain injury he suffered. We thank you for the holiday season that so many of us were able to enjoy this past week. Thankful too for the safety and travel that you've given those around us. And we pray for that same blessing of safety as people return home or return to college. And we pray, Lord, that we would never take that blessing of safety for granted. This is a glorious day you've given us, Father. A beautiful weekend that we've enjoyed. We thank you for that gift. And we thank you, too, for the promise of moisture on the horizon. Remember us, too, in this way, Father, for we depend on your gift of rain and snow to replenish our fields. Hear us, Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake. Amen. For special music this morning, we welcome Anna DeYoung.
so much. It's beautiful, inspiring. Let's see, where are we? We're going to stand and sing, What Child Is This?
Let's pray. Again, Lord, we thank you for the gift of your word. We pray now that your word would be an open book to us by the work of your Holy Spirit. Help us to listen, understand, to believe, and to place our hope in all that you have told us and promised us for Jesus' sake. Amen. This year we're beginning our exploration of the Christmas story, not at the beginning, but Actually, it's going to seem like the end of the Christmas story, the, the account of Jesus being presented in the temple after he's born and meeting Simeon. This is Luke 2, verses 25 through 32. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms, praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'll also be working through Psalm 74 um, in the second half of, of this sermon this morning. Simeon. Now, there was this man called Simeon, whom the Lord had told would not see death until he had seen the promised Christ with his own eyes. And so Simeon went forth. He went into the streets of Jerusalem every day. He went shopping at the marketplace. He went to the gas station to fill his gas, uh, to fill his gas tank for his car. He went to the bank to make sure that his, his deposits were all in order. And everywhere he went, Simeon looked over his shoulder and he wondered if he would see the Christ today. And he would go about his day. And when Simeon got to the end of each day, Simeon said to himself, I did not see the Christ today, I get to live another day. Until that day, when Simeon was directed by the Holy Spirit to go to the temple. And so Simeon went to the temple, and lo, his eyes did behold Joseph and Mary carrying this little one, whose name was Jesus, whom the Holy Spirit told Simeon was indeed the Christ, the Messiah, the promised Son of God, the Savior of the world. And Simeon did say to himself, Oh, no! My life is over. For I have seen the Lord, and now I must die. The end. It's not how it went. Have you ever noticed that in that little story? Have you ever heard that story before? Of this man Simeon in the temple having been told that he would not die until he saw the Christ, and having seen the Christ, knows that now his life may end in this world. And what that would be like, that's the end of my life. Simeon is not sad Simeon is not afraid. Simeon rejoices. Simeon sings a Christmas carol. Simeon says to the Lord, you may dismiss your servant in peace. My watch is over. 
I've seen the Christ. Simeon is happy. The Lord directs Simeon to the temple, to this particular place to meet Jesus, to meet Jesus for whom would be done the things that needed to be done according to the custom of the law for eight-day-old boys. He's in the temple. That's important. He's in the temple. Simeon is in a glorious place, this temple in Jerusalem now, this temple of Herod. This place was an architectural marvel. It was in the center of Jerusalem, on the highest place in Jerusalem. It was the center of attention and activity, and it was the talk of the world. It was one of the most magnificent structures in all the world of its day, including all of the structures of Rome of its day. The Temple of Herod, a place of glory, a place of worship. But this temple was not only a place of glory, it was also a place of grief. This temple was a place of grief because the people of Israel remembered that God had made some promises. You see, their forefathers had been very sinful, so sinful and idolatrous and wicked. They had broken God's covenant in countless ways in, for countless times over countless generations until God finally said, enough. I've given you the promised land. I'm going to take you out of the promised land. And so he did. And he took them to Babylon. And they were there about 70 years. But in Babylon, God, in his mercy and grace, said to these people who thought they had lost all hope and really had no reason for hope, yet God gave them reason for hope. God says, I'm going to make a promise to you. I promise that the son of King David will again sit on the throne of David. Because David's kingdom will not end. And more than that, that temple in Jerusalem that, that your enemies have, have completely destroyed, completely leveled, that place of of, of worship and celebration and feasting and praise, that place of glory that King Solomon built, I'm going to make sure that that temple is rebuilt again and the glory of that new temple will be even greater than the glory of Solomon's first temple. That was the promise. Now let me take you back to Herod's temple. Magnificent structure. But this new temple was not built by King's, King David's descendant. Built by Herod. One of the, 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 the members of this family of, of the Herod's who were unspeakably cruel and wicked in the days of Jesus. Built not by a good king, but by a wicked tyrant. That magnificent temple was a reminder of who was actually in charge right now, and that was no reason for thanks and joy in any of Jerusalem. Was God really keeping his promise? And where's the son of David? Where's his throne? Who is in charge here? You see, it looks, it looks like, it looks like God is gone. They have all of the, all of the pretty things of worship and the things of God around them. But the heart 
the soul of God's people has been ripped out. There's the house of God. But nobody anymore is hearing the word of God. There's the people of God. But where's the promise of God? We can go through the motions, but does it mean anything? Psalm 74. This is a psalm that was written when people were looking at the ruins of Solomon's temple and they're living, they're living far away in Babylon. Psalm 74 is a psalm of people who want to hope in God and they're not sure that they can. Do you know what that's like? You want to hope in God. You want to know that he's going to hear your prayers. You want to know that he makes a difference. You want to know that he is worth following. But you don't see how he makes a difference. Do you know what that's like? Psalm 74. God, why have you rejected us forever? Why does your anger smolder against the sheep of your pasture? Remember the nation you purchased long ago, the people of your inheritance whom you redeemed. Mount Zion, where you dwelt. That's where the temple was. Remember that, God. Turn your, t turn your steps toward these everlasting ruins, all this destruction the enemy has brought on the sanctuary. This temple is destroyed. Your foes roared in the place where you met with us. They set up their standards of signs. They behaved like men wielding axes to cut through a thicket of trees. They smashed all the carved paneling. This is what the temple looked like. They smashed the carved paneling with their axes and hatchets. They burned your sanctuary to the ground. They defiled the dwelling place of your name. They said in their hearts, we will crush them completely. They burned every place where God was worshipped in the land. Remember God? Remember what you promised and remember? Remember that you said you wouldn't let this go unanswered? Verse 9 through 11. We are given no signs from God. No prophets are left. None of us knows how long this will be. How long will the enemy mock you, God? Will the foe revile your name forever? Why do you hold back your hand, your right hand? Take it from the folds of your garment. In other words, God, get your hands out of your pockets. Get your hands out of your pockets and destroy them. that, God, you've got no prophets, you've got no word for us, we don't even know if you exist. Nobody speaks your word anymore. But then verse 12. But God is my king from long ago. He brings salvation on the earth. That's one thing that will not change. The temple might be gone, the promises might be silent, but you know what will not change? God will not die, God cannot die. God will come again. He brings salvation on the earth. For you, God, in verse 13, it was you who split open the sea by your power. You broke the heads of the monsters in the waters. It was you who crushed the head of, the, of Leviathan, the sea monsters, and gave it as food to the creatures of the desert. It was you who opened up springs and streams and dried up the ever-flowing rivers. You're the God of creation. The day is yours and yours is also the night. You establish the sun and the moon. Lord, you're the Lord of the day when we can see what's, what's going on. You are Lord of what we can see. And you are Lord of the night when we can't see and all we can do is wait. Even when it is night, you are Lord as we wait. It was you who set all the boundaries of the earth and made both summer and winter.
So in verses 18 and following, keep your promises, God. Remember how the enemy has mocked you, Lord, how foolish people have reviled your name. Do not hand over the life of your dove, your people Israel. Do not hand over the life of your dove to wild beasts, these enemies of your kingdom. Do not forget the lives of your afflicted people forever. Have regard for your covenant because the haunts of violence fills the dark places of the land. Do not let the oppressed retreat in disgrace. May the poor and needy praise your name. People who are looking for you, Lord, to do the right thing, may they finally praise your name because you come and deliver. Rise up, O God, and defend your cause. Remember how fools mock you all day long. Do not ignore the clamor of your adversaries, the uproar of your enemies, which rises continually. Lord, keep your promise. It's time to come. And in this place, in this temple, Simeon is standing. In this place where God has made his promises and sealed his promises, now, God, keep your promises Lord, I'm looking for Christ to come because when Christ comes, David's son will be seated on the throne and when Christ comes, we won't even need the building of a temple anymore because Christ himself will be our glorious temple. He will be the one who will bring us into worship and faith in God. So the Holy Spirit promised one of the last watchmen of Israel waiting for God to keep the promise. God promised Simeon, you will not die until you see the promise kept. You will not die until your hope is satisfied. It looks like Jesus is not going to come. It looks like the enemies are in charge. It looks like worship is just going through the motions of words and songs and sacrifices that have absolutely nothing to do with the world we're living in right now, and that's wrong. God, you are king. And this dark world will come to see your, the light of your glory one day. And this temple is not a place of our grief. This temple is a place of your glory. So if God told you, you're not going to die until you see Jesus coming, would you say to yourself, well, there was no Jesus on the clouds today, so I guess I can fold my hands and go to sleep, and I've got another good day to look forward to tomorrow. I'm not going to die until Jesus comes. Oh, no, there he is on the clouds. My life is over. Or would you say, glory to God, there's Jesus on the clouds. My life has just begun. Let's pray. Lord in heaven, forgive us whenever we are a discouraged people. Be patient with us when we are a forgetful people. And inspire us to be a hopeful people. You kept your promise once. You will keep your promise at last. This world is yours and belongs to you always, Lord Jesus. And to this world we pray. To us we pray. You would come again. Make all things new. And gather us home as your people. Amen. Let's stand and sing.
people of God. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. To this let God's people say, 